afternoon, Simon from Simple Life. This is a little video showing you the evolution of my garden, the one that I've shot most of my videos in through the spring and summer of this year. And it'd be really interesting just to show you how it, if you like, came to be the way it is. So this is about seven years ago. This is the decking under the copper beech tree. We've just put in the block paving. The bird bath to the left is still there. It's actually survived all of the reincarnations that the garden has gone through. This is a shot from the, the decking itself. Looking down, the paving is standing out as a major feature at this point in time. There's still not much in the way of planting to the left-hand side, which was previously grass. The pergola to the far left, and you can see there was some established planting to the right-hand side. The acanthus is one that, that stands out. Um, and you can see Syringa in the back there as well. So we know it's kind of spring. This is looking the other way back towards the decking. The pergola now is, is close right. And you can see the trunk of the copper beech tree at the sort of back centre. So this is a picture that was taken last year, uh, taken by Tony Wingfield. And I just love this view of the garden which normally just don't ever get to see um, it's just amazing to see how much is actually taken up with planting uh, we can see roses in there doing their thing there's a, a white bud there we can see the sycamore is in full leaf the copper beech is in full leaf um, it's just an unusual and very special shot for me this is the pond it's shortly after we'd first put it in. So it's about two and a half years old. We put the pond in in the October and you can see there's no planting in there at the moment. Uh, we put we put turf around the edge. You can see the bed by the bird bath is still completely bare, but it just shows you that everything has to start off simple and basic. The bird bath again, you can see the acer at the back is just coming into leaf, the hebe behind that. Uh, and we've got the, the geese doing their thing, which is really, really cool. This shot in the front is a purple clematis or an Italian leather plant. Uh, they are the most beautiful purple and amazing flowers. This plant actually has an amazing history or short history to it. Uh, I've got another video about that, of course, you can always ask me. And behind that is a star jasmine. In fact, the pergola itself this year, the, the jasmine jasmine, the scent has just been unbelievably awesome. You know, almost ready to die for. Just superb. Back to the pond. This is the view into the corner. You can see that decking I mentioned at the very, very beginning has been laid over the upper part of the pond, uh, painted black. And that's where ultimately we spend a lot of time sitting in the shade of the copper beech tree. The idea was the top pond is somewhere you could put your feet in, have a paddle, and we keep it clear of plants. And the bottom section is going to become our, our wildlife pond, if you like, that's full of planting and vegetation. Um, and it's just worked out great. Here we go, same view. Um, that's actually this year. You can see it's very early on in the year as we haven't got in and cleaned it up and sorted it out after it's, it's winter overgrowth. The cow feet has produced those lovely yellow flowers, which are beautiful in springtime. And on the, you can just about see bottom right, this is silver leaves of a silver ragwort. There's a viburnum to the back left, and you can again just about make out the mahonia. All really great, interesting planting. This is looking from at the garden from where we took out the garden shed. It's just a view that we've only really got just lately, the way that we can see it now. There's a choisier to the right, that's the white flowers. There are foxgloves in front of the bird bath. There are roses further over to the left. You can get a really good shot of the silver ragwort now. Um, and you can see alliums over towards the pergola and obviously bordered at the top by the leaves of the copper beech. This is uh, another shot from the pond this is this year and it gives you a really good comparison to just see how much the planting has really come on we've cleaned everything out now got all of the uh, winter growth that we don't want anymore which is 
brilliant. Uh, the aces are coming into leaf. The choisier is still white. You can see bluebells in the background just in front of our statue of Efrain Anagogna. And as to who she was, ask me another time. But it's just full of colour and it's beautiful and I love it. Love it so much. This is a little bit further across in front of the statue with another bird bath on the top and it's bluebells. Uh, how could you ever, ever not just love and adore bluebells? Love it. Here's one of our little fairy gardens and we've got some fungi, some, some toadstools, mushrooms that have come along and just kind of lending it a little bit of authenticity. And you can see a purple salvia behind one of the most beautiful, beautiful purples you can get in your garden. Just superb. And wildlife friendly, we love alliums. And thankfully the bees also love alliums. And that works really, really well for us. We've actually got some red tailed bumbles nesting under our pergola. And for me, that's an honor. They don't do us any harm, but they do keep us alive. So that's absolutely amazing too. Another salvia, this is hot lips. This is an amazing plant. It flowers almost all summer. They start off red like this. They then become red and white, which is probably where the kind of hot lips thing comes from. And they finish off almost white at the end of the year, which is amazing. Purple roses, garden roses, just stunning. And you can see the white syringa at the back. Uh, there's the leaves there of Abadlia, but they've yet to do their magic. So that's really, really cool as well. So there you go. There's a little tour of my back garden through the ages from creation to well, I'll say maturity, but there's plenty more years to come. But what's really, really amazing is that this whole garden has takes about two hours a month to keep it under. All we do is contain it and put in new plants from time to time. When we're out and we see things that we like, we tend to start them in the yard and then bring them into the back garden so they stand a chance against the vast amount of green and vegetation that's out there already. So that's Simon Pollard, Simple Life Garden Design. If you would like this kind of a garden, then please get in touch. You can message us or call 07970414784. And if we can get you on the road to garden design, that would be fantastic. Thank you very much. Goodbye.